Meantime, as we just mentioned, J.P. Morgan results just out minutes ago. I want to get straight over Wilfred Frost, who's been digging through some of those numbers. Uh, what's the highlight for you, Wilf? Yes, yeah, so re- really interesting this. So essentially the revenue and EPS are pretty much in line. The revenue fractionally ahead 30.3 billion. The, the forecast was for 29.9. The EPS 3.33, th- $3.33. Uh, the, the forecast was for $3.01. Uh, but, but you've got a, a, a bit of a flattering EPS because of a reserve release. Uh, we weren't sure coming into this quarter if there'd be more to release after the last few quarters last year where of course, all the pandemic build in reserves was being released. We have got another release of about 1.8 billion, uh, which has boosted EPS by about 40 or 50 cents. That, that's in the numbers. So it's a true uh, beat, but it's just uh, not a beat that will be repeatable for, for uh, evermore. If we look into the underlying performance, uh, net interest income is, is the stronger part of the business, i.e. we're into that part where the yield curve's really going to matter 13.7 billion Uh, the forecast there was 13.5 billion Uh, and then the capital markets performance a little bit soft relative to expectations still really strong year over year uh, but just a little soft relative to expectations so investment banking revenue 3.2 billion that's basically in line and then the trading revenue fractionally soft 2 billion for equities uh, 3.3 billion uh, versus a forecast of 3.4 billion for fixed income now that's better than what Jeffries did earlier in the week on fixed income trading But it's fractionally behind estimates. And just to give you a snapshot there on the capital markets performance, investment banking up 28 percent year over year. So uh, still doing very well, obviously, in the grand scheme of things, trading down 13 percent year over year. And the big question, of course, for the capital markets divisions of all of these banks is how long can that gift keep on giving? Just getting a snapshot there, uh, perhaps that it can't keep on giving quite so strongly uh, going forward. But the interest, uh, uh, the yield curve part of the business was a beat uh, and did well. But overall, the re- reason you're seeing this, this stock trade lower is because of that reserve release being the reason that EPS was a beat and revenue is basically in line. If we look at uh, Wells Fargo, you get a snapshot there uh, of the fact that you want to be in, uh, in yield curve exposure going, uh, going ahead for the year ahead. So EPS is a decent beat, 138 per share versus forecast of 113 a share. Revenue 20.9 billion versus a forecast of 18.9 billion. Like JP Morgan, they have a reserve release which has flattered the EPS, but they also have a decent revenue beat as well, uh, and that's because of their greater exposure to the yield curve. Net interest income, a uh, decent little beat, 9.3 billion. The forecast was for 9.1 billion. Their expense ratio, sorry, their efficiency ratio coming down a lot to 63%. So we have to work out exactly why that is, but a big question for them. Uh, medium and long term is can they finally get their expenses uh, under control. It seems like they have a little bit here, but we need to have a bit more detail on on how sustainable that is or if it's a one off. And and I think a lot of people will be wanting to discuss the net interest margin, 2.11 percent. That's about seven or eight basis points better than uh, expected. And of course, huge swing factors there. If these banks can have a slightly better interest margin, it drops through very quickly to the bottom line which we've got a glimpse of in these numbers up 1% uh, in pre-market, guys. All right. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.